Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's chess channel and welcome to our Gary Kasparov saga. So in this series we're following Gary Kasparov's life and his chess career from the year 1981 to 2000 and we're continuing now again with a great game uh, from the 1982 Interzonal tournament in which Gary Kasparov faced another top grandmaster from Romania, it's Florin Georgiou and uh, this game will be again the so-called Kasparov attack of the Queen's Indian and uh, in my opinion, it's a really a great setup uh, to play Queens against Queen's Indian setups because uh, you are not allowing, first of all, the spinning idea. You get the pawn central control. You have a nice attacking formation. So for those who have troubles, maybe to play against Imzo Indian, Bogo Indian, Queen's Indian setups, I think again you should consider maybe this Gary Kasparov attack. It's a really a great, great attacking formation against these types of setups. So. Let's check out now the game. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, Gary Kasparov won this interzonal tournament in 1982, then qualified for the candidates, and then had the opportunity to face uh, Anatoly Karpov, of course, in 1985 for the World Championship throne. So let's check out now the game. Of course, round one and uh, fight. fight. So d4. I'll explain, of course, again this Gary Kasparov attack. Um, I really have to consider myself to play this line. I deviate a little bit when I play. Uh, against the um, uh, Queen's Indian, so I th really should consider this option to play the move a3, which uh, Gary Kasparov will play, of course. d4, knight to f6, c4. So e6, knight to f3. So, first of all, again, I'm repeating, I've mentioned that now 100 times in my videos, but I explained again this counter name. So, Indian setup is really my recommendation against Queen's Indian setups. First of all, this bishop to uh, b4 is not so powerful like in. This moves after knight to c3, so it prevents uh, the spinning idea. You don't have so many worries to get uh, this double pawn structure after potential bishop to b4. Still, we can maneuver a knight to d2. So, here um, in the continuation of the game, uh, Florin Gergiu played the move b6. Uh, he delays uh, the situation with the bishop, with the dark square bishop. Still, he waits to play uh, Gary Kasparov to play the move knight to c3. So, we have now a3. This is this Gary Kasparov attack it prevents bishop to b4 ideas we haven't lost anything uh, still we can now um, develop our knight on the most natural square knight to c3 and if now knight to e4 happens um, this should worry you because we can simply take knight takes e4 bishop takes e4 and now simply developing the bishop on a most active square here to f4 after something like bishop to e7 which seems to me like a natural move knight to d2 you see wherever the bishop goes maybe to g6 still we would have opportunities to uh, get our pawn central control really a pawn storm in the center with uh, with this very nice move so or we could even develop here with g3 bishop to uh, g uh, g2 so we're waiting basically where where this bishop goes if it goes for instance to b7 i think e4 is perfectly fine so after the move knight to c3 the main line here is the move d5 and here again, I'm, um, I, we have analyzed already uh, this particular line in our Gary Kasparov series. C takes d5, the best way here really per to proceed because, first of all, bishop to d5 is not so good. You lose the bishop pair in an early stage of the game. You have already moved your b6 pawn. There are several likes for problems then in the continuation of the game. If you take with the pawn, it's not so good because uh, you have blocked out your uh, likes for bishop. Uh, the pawn structure in the center is static. So in order to make something happen with this bishop, you would need to maneuver it somewhere or maybe play it again on uh, a6 or similar. So that's why the main line is knight to d5, but now we have queen to c2. This is this really great Gary Kasparov attack. We are trying now e4, uh, the knight, uh, if we play the move e4 immediately, knight takes c3, bishop takes e4 will happen. So that's why queen to c2 so far a necessary move. c5, the best way here really is to break the center immediately uh, you should lose tempos here as black you have to crack the position because white is going to build a pawn central control we have e4 knight to c3 b takes c3 and now bishop to e7 uh, here in the game bishop to b5 this is now a different line that Gary Kasparov tried uh, in our previous analyzed games he tried some uh, castling ideas immediately bishop to b5 uh, here after the move bishop to c6 Okay, uh, we can cover the light squares, but this bishop on c6, it's really not the most natural square for the bishop. Uh, it seems a little bit loose on the board. Here, bishop to d3, played by Gary. Now, knight to d7, played by Florin Georgiou. And now we have these opportunities to play e5 after potential castling. And then bishop takes h7. And you see, 
many many pieces are aiming towards the king side uh, there are always this greek gift tactic possibilities if for instance black castles maybe something like uh, e5 as i said bishop to h7 knight to g5 h4 uh, bishop takes h6 if for instance h6 uh, weakness happens so great great attacking possibilities here for for black in the game uh, castling played by kasparov and we have now h6 as we said uh, here e5 and bishop takes h7 was a serious threat the problem is for black here in, it seems to me in these types of setups that black is simply lacking of defenders in front of the king you have already lost your knight on f6 which was a natural defender in front of black's king so if you play knight to f6 again you have lost so many many tempos uh, in the game you maneuver your knight on a natural square so it seems to me that white has made already great progress uh, in this um, this opening in this development so that's why i really lo love this uh, gary kasparov attack so a uh, rook to d1 great move again we're getting the rook on the same file like the queen so we want to open split the pawn structure somewhere in the center getting really a nice attack on the queen that's why queen to c7 getting out of some tactical madness and now gary kasparov plays of d5 this is his attack so it's really a nice Nice tactic uh, that Gary Kasparov has prepared here, sacrificing a pawn because he realized that black uh, king is simply too um, too long in the center. Now it's really to, uh, time to break the center. After e takes d, we have e takes d5, bishop to d5. Okay, we have lost the pawn, but now bishop to b5. That's the great attack here that uh, Gary Kasparov has prepared here. If you try bishop to c6, still it's a dangerous game. Uh, bishop to f4, that's the main threat here. Uh, after something like queen to uh, b7 we can simply take and now rook to e1 uh, is um, sort of an idea by white to prevent black from castling and in this continuation i think black would be forced to play the move king to f8 which is again on a natural square uh, for the king you could make a mistake to take maybe here the bishop um, queen to f4 then simply bishop takes c6 and now after potential queen side castling you see still so many light core problems uh, in front of black's king we could go uh, maybe uh, somehow maybe something like g3 kicking away the queen maybe queen to d6 but now queen to a4 is really really dangerous threat the rooks are uh, controlling everything rook to b1 would be also an idea maybe with a4 a5 ideas to really break the position in front of black's king so castling queen side is not such a powerful idea here because you have as i said too many lights were problems so bishop to b5 we see here in the game a6 was played and now comes again this tactic bishop to f4 queen to f4 bishop takes d7 king to d7 and now rook to uh, d5 the king cannot castle anymore uh, the king is now stuck in the center now it's time really to get this other rook into the game to find a good square for the for the knight and this is game over here for black because you're stayed with your king in center against such a great attacker like Gary Kasparov after rook to d5, king to c7, and now rook to e1, attacking the bishop, bishop to d6. Here, Florin Georgiou tries really to stay compact with the pieces in front of the king, but it's simply too late. Here, rook to uh, f5, uh, attacking the queen. Great harmony between white pieces. They're already performing well together. They're creating great, great attacking possibilities. You see, this rooks by black haven't participated in the game so far they're on the starting squares uh, the rook on a8 the rook on h8 hasn't played so far on the other hand gary kasparov's rooks have played so far creating uh, great attacking uh, formations now after queen to c4 we have rook to e4 here gary kasparov creates another attack on the queen the queen has to move really on a weird square uh, the queen is also out of game and now of course rook to f7 we have uh, get our pawn back first of all but it's not about pawns in this position anymore it's about delivering checkmate to really create the madness here in front of black's king king to b8 uh, we have rook to e6 attacking the bishop if you try this is the problem if you try uh, for instance bishop to c7 that wasn't played in the game but if you try to stay compact here somehow then you get a4 uh, queen to c4 is the only good move for the for the queen and now uh, queen to g6 with this serious serious threat to play rook takes b6 queen to b6 and uh to deliver checkmate queen to b3 would be a forced line here but now rook to c7 that's a really great attack here by gary uh so as i said this wasn't played in the game but let's see here you're getting checkmated c7 so after the move rook to e6 
what to do here it's game over here for black uh, black tried rook to d8 to getting get at least one of these rooks into the game but against as i said such a great attacker it's simply too late now c4 you see you don't have so many squares with the queen you have only the square uh c6 and now comes uh here knight to e5 attacking the queen you cannot take uh bishop takes e5 rook to c6 the problem is now that the queen on c2 is still protecting uh, the d1 square of course there are maybe some backtrack problems for white but still the queen is protecting everything after knight to e5 queen to c8 was played and now after queen to b1 believe me or not it was in move 27 following georgi resigned so what what to do here why did he resign because after something like maybe bishop to c7 in order to protect everything still you get this uh, similar tactic rook to b6 uh, bishop takes b6 queen to b6 and it's game over so let's go back this is really a setup let's go just move this first 10 12 moves so as i said a3 very important knight to c3 and now queen to c2 this is the great setup by gary kasparov e4 and uh, i really like bishop to b5 now after knight to d7 castle you see here uh black loss sort of a tempo and now rook to d1 now d5 that's really a great attack by gary kasparov on the game very very easily in 27 moves, as i said uh this is uh, now uh, one of our last games of this interzonal tournament and we'll switch to this um uh candidates tournament it was even more tense than this uh, interzonal tournament because in the candidates even more better grandmaster will participate still uh again testing again uh our piece from Bako Gary Kasparov so I really enjoyed this game I think uh, this can be your opening prep against Queen's Indian Bogo Indian Nimtso Indian setups and similar stuff so you see how uh, well prepared Gary Kasparov was although as as we said he had some troubles in the tournament played also many draws had also some losing games say for instance against Mikhail Tal managed to draw, uh, draw the game but this this really this attack by Gary Kasparov is something that you should memorize in order to win this game maybe very very easily so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot if you want to see more Gary Kasparov's games uh, here is the link and uh, if you want to see the best chess games uh, played by humans history check out my best chess games of all time series and if you like this content you can also subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and uh, the best is the best of you.